Thank you very much. It's a, certainly a pleasure to be here. And um, I think that uh, what I'm going to start with is tell you that everyone in this room woke up this morning with an ongoing struggle um, played out on a microscopic battlefield in all of us. And here we have the enemy troops, which I'll call free radicals, and uh, they're battling the allied troops, which we call antioxidants. And clearly, if the free radicals, which come from not only an unhealthy diet, but exposure to pesticides and pollution, uh, ionizing radiation, overwhelm uh, our antioxidant uh, defenses, well, we not only get premature aging, but we get cardiovascular disease, cancer, uh, diabetes, hypertension, and a whole host of chronic uh, diseases. Well, one of the best ways that we can fight these uh, invaders, these free radicals, which I'll talk about, is with diet and a healthy diet. And this is nothing new. We know Hippocrates said that let medicine be thy food. Um, and clearly, uh, he also said that when a patient is sick, treat with diet first. And I didn't really know much about that. <clears throat> I was an invasive cardiologist doing balloon angioplasty uh, 20 years ago when I came home one night, rather late, I picked up an article called The Seven Countries Study, and I read about <clears throat> the power of nutrition, where they found that in the Mediterranean basin, they could reduce the risk of a heart attack and premature death by 90% compared to an American diet and lifestyle. And a light bulb went off in my head at that time. I said, my gosh, they're getting better results with a knife and a fork than I am with balloons and catheters and scalpels. And so I think that we really have to understand that the American diet today is toxic. And it's toxic because it's highly processed, calorie dense, and nutrient depleted. And this uh, leads to what's termed postprandial dysmetabolism, which basically uh, is a surge of glucose and triglycerides and fatty acids after the typical American meal that overwhelm the Krebs cycle, leading to an outpouring of free radicals. And of course, free radicals ultimately lead to uh, inflammation, um, oxidative stress, uh, certainly uh, sympathetic hyperactivity, uh, as well as endothelial dysfunction. So here's a study that uh, I'll start out with uh, by O'Keefe and colleagues that showed that after a typical Western or American meal, you immediately have a spike in, in glucose and triglycerides. And immediately, you have an increase after eating of inflammation, of oxidative stress, and a decrease in endothelial function. Well, the question is, with the American diet, where did we go wrong? So here is the USDA food pyramid that was presented to all of us in the year 1992. And if you look at it, in my opinion, the USDA dropped the football because at the base of this pyramid, they said we should eat a lot of grains, but they did not differentiate whole grains from processed refined grains. They told us we should eat uh, several servings of protein a day, but they didn't differentiate between cold water fish and red meat. They told us we should have multiple servings of dairy products, but they didn't differentiate between whole milk versus low-fat or skim milk. And they told us to avoid oils at all costs, but they didn't understand that we have healthy oils, such as olive oil, canola oil. And so I feel that they really uh, missed the boat. But you have to understand that the USDA is not interested in your health. They're interested in promoting agriculture. And I think that uh, has been part of our problem. One of the other problems that we've had is um, having excess calories. And clearly, if we know that part of our obesity epidemic that we have in America today is because we consume uh, more calories uh, at every meal. Here's an example of uh, the typical order of French fries that you would get 20 years ago. It would be about 200 calories. 
Now if you pulled into the fast food restaurant, it would be over 600 calories, and you'd have to walk or exercise two and a half hours just to burn off the difference in calories. Now why does that matter? Well, again, it gets to the fact that when we uh, consume excessive calories, this is beyond our, the ability of the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation to be able to handle all the surge of glucose and triglycerides, leading to what I showed you earlier, um, a increase in inflammation, oxidative stress, and certainly a decrease in endothelial function. And it's not uncommon after people eat a large meal that they go outside, the old picture of the, uh, so the person who eats a big meal goes outside, starts to shovel snow, and drops dead. And a lot of sudden cardiac death is a result of this surge of free fatty acids, which is not only highly arrhythmogenic, but it's also thrombogenic. Well, French fries uh, also have a problem beyond uh, having um, uh, the, the problem of having a large order of French fries giving you 600 calories. And that has to do with trans fats. And it's an interesting story because in the year 1911, there was an interesting uh, gentleman by the name of William Cooper Proctor. And he walked into the office of a gentleman uh, by the name of Gamble and threw a white block onto the table. And he said, I have an invention. And this is going to revolutionize our food industry. And Gamble jumped up and he says, wow, this is terrific. You know, this is uh, going to be something that could be used instead of lard, instead of butter. Let's call it Crisco. And at the same time, margarine was also introduced. Uh, and clearly, uh, with uh, the introduction of partially hydrogenated oils and trans fats, uh, we've been killing people ever since. The Harvard School of Public Health estimates that a, uh, roughly 100,000 premature deaths occur per year because of trans fat consumption. 